This is a demonstration screencast of the eDune cartridge for the Commodore 128, starting with the boot options screen that you see when you first turn on your computer. Um, this is being done using a patched version of the VICE emulator that's part of the project um, in order to make the capturing easier. Um, but it's connected on the back end to an actual eDune cartridge, so all the features and performance that you see in the demonstration are exactly as they appear on real hardware. Um, when you first boot your system, you'll be presented with this option of selecting a drive that will be mapped to uh, Unit 10 by default. And indeed, if you type catalog of U10, you will see the contents of the home directory on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you just type the regular catalog command, you'll see what's in drive 8, in this case, a floppy disk with Loadrunner. But you probably don't want to do that. You probably just want to type the DOS command and jump into the Edun shell, um, which is uh, reminiscent of... MS-DOS. So if you've ever used MS-DOS, you'll feel quite at home with the Eden shell. Um, so the Eden shell has a status bar at the top, shows you the current memory available and the date and time, and tells you just a little bit about the system. Most importantly, what disk devices are available to you. So by default, you have uh, A through E. This is all configurable in a, in a configuration file, with uh, A and B being your um, native Commodore floppy drives. C is your virtual home directory, D is a mountable image, E is another user directory with some apps, and finally Z is the system directory. All that comes from an autoexec.bat file that runs at initial launch. Uh, there's a help command. If you type help, you'll see a list of all the commands that are available, and if you type the name of any command, it will show you more details about that command. So for this demo, we're gonna be making extensive use of CD, browse, and mount commands. And here is the help for those commands. Uh, if you just type L return, it will take you back to the list of all the commands and Q to exit the help. And you're back to the C prompt. And here you can use commands like CD to switch to the A drive. You type uh, the familiar DIR directory command. You'll see the contents of the A drive again, just like you saw from the basic prompt using catalog. Directory D shows that you have an empty virtual floppy. It's actually a D71 image and uh, CDC take you back to the C prompt and there again is directory your home directory and you can browse into the subdirectories just by using the CD command so we'll go to Eden base games and type CD by itself just takes you back to your home directory again there's also a browse command which makes this a little bit more interactive and easy to do and if you type browse you can just uh, navigate using arrow keys or the joystick and uh, move between directories and subdirectories and even mount a disk as I just mounted this games 128 disk image onto the D drive. So what about launching external programs like for example games that might be on that uh, D drive that we just mounted the image for. Um, here's a directory of, um, of what's on D colon. Um, three 80 column games for the Commodore 128. And if we reboot, we go back to the basic prompt, and this time instead of using the default C drive mapped to unit 10, we'll, we'll right arrow to select D. And so we press return, and now the D drive catalog shows us those very same 80 column games. And if we just do run star from unit 10, it will launch the first title, which is Alien Invaders. So 80 column Space Invaders cloned for the for the 128. So it's that easy and that fast to, to launch uh, native Commodore games outside of the DOS shell. Um, but of course, there's much more you can do within the DOS shell too. So we'll go back to the DOS shell and uh, now we'll take a look at the uh, mount command using a different title. This time I'm gonna mount the uh, 128 robots, um, another D71 image. And we type the directory using the slash W switch for Y. And you can see there's many files on that disk image. And maybe you recognize this as uh, Petsky Robots 128. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at the uh, mode command. Uh, mode command uh, has a lot of options and will let you use the, um, the C128's 80 column display to its maximum benefit. If you just type mode by itself, it'll tell you your current active mode, which is 80 by 27 is the default columns and rows. And we can change this to, for example, 80 by 25. Um, we'll show a um, 25 row display, which doesn't fit all of the files on the D drive. We could change that to 28 
rows. And uh, now you see the entire directory fits on one screen. And we can also experiment with uh, changing the uh, character set. So mode ANS changes to the ANSI character set, STD standard, back to the standard font character set. <clears throat> and then there's graphical modes too. So mode VDC6, this is uh, what we call mode six in, in Edun, and it's a very colorful, you know, dither display, high resolution, 16 colors with dithering. Um, this is mode seven, um, which is a very high resolution monochrome display up to 800 by 600. You can see it's a little off center, but you can use the arrow keys in this uh, mode debug command to, uh, to recenter the screen. If we uh, do uh, mode three, this is a more familiar mode that um, actually works with only 16K of, um, of VRAM. And this will be used for some other applications we'll be demonstrating later. So yeah, seven, seven total modes, six of them graphical. Um, the even numbers require 64K of RAM. Mode 40 takes you to the 40 column display. And if we reboot from this display, um, now we're in the, you know, normal 40 column C128 basic prompt. And if we just press F5 to run the first file on our still mounted Petsky Robots 128 floppy image, then you'll see that it um, rather quickly loads, loads the game, uh, loads the uh, level files, sound files, etc. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you can jump into a, a round of uh, Petsky Robots uh, pretty quickly using the cartridge and the image. So we talked about virtual devices, and um, indeed we talked about the disk devices, but there are some other virtual devices, and I want to talk about these interactive terminals that are shown when you type the info command. So L stands for Lua, L colon, M colon stands for modem, X colon stands for, for Linux. And uh, indeed you can access a Linux prompt just by typing the, uh, the well, pressing the F7 key as a shortcut or typing the Linux command. And once that's your Linux prompt, you have a full 80 column VT100 terminal. So you can run any familiar Linux commands on your Raspberry Pi. Um, <clears throat> to, uh, to leave that, you just you type exit, um, but you can do things like edit your configuration file. This is the configuration file for, for the eDune cartridge being edited from the eDune cartridge inside the Linux terminal using the, the VI command. So the Linux command can also be passed the name of a command. So INXI in this case will just immediately run that command and show you the output. So this is showing you the, the basically the specifications of the Raspberry Pi 02 that's connected to the cartridge. Um, something like Linux IP address would show the output of the IP command with ADDR passed to it. And there you can pick out your um, your IP address for the wired ethernet that's connected, uh, 192.168.1.185. And just to reinforce the fact that this is using the virtual console capability, the TTY X colon does the exact same thing as the Linux command, it takes you to that prompt. There's also TTY L colon, which would bring up the Lua prompt. Uh, we'll talk more about Lua integration later. <clears throat> and you can do, um, connections to a Telnet BPS by using the M colon for modem device. So we first switch to the ANSI font and then do TTY M colon and a URL, in this case the black flag um, Telnet BBS, and you're transported to that BBS connected to it and you have nice 80 column ANSI graphics um, to allow you to, to use really any Telnet BBS across the internet. Um, Runs uh, quite fast, no limitation like 9600 baud or anything. It's uh, the full speed that the cartridge I.O. supports, which is 1.5 uh, megabits per second. Um, <clears throat> there's lots of other 80 column graphics features um, that ship with the Eden cartridge. Uh, this is Liner, L-I-N-E-R, which is a relatively simple screensaver, just draws animated lines on the 80 column display. 
Um, not the most exciting thing, but you can see that 80 column graphics are supported. There's an API backing this and you can write your own stuff. Um, if we um, browse to um, our pictures subdirectory, Eun base pics, um, and the VDC color, you see there's a bunch of .vdc files here, and these indeed are um, high resolution, 80 column graphical images. So we'll show a few of them. Um, Loch Ness VDC and Edun VDC and Terminator VDC. These are all using the mode six, which I described previously when looking at the mode command as um, high resolution, kind of high color dithered um, capability for the VDC. So you can see some pretty colorful images, at least for 8-bit computer. Um, and you just press the space bar to advance to the next image. So in addition to the show VDC command, which works for monochrome images as well, um, we'll show an example. This is this uh, 64K Lion. This is a 800 by 600 monochrome image pretty much the maximum resolution you can you can show on the VDC. Um, but you can also show some lower resolution images that are actually direct ports from the uh, ZX Spectrum. So it turns out these SCR files, which are ZX Spectrum images, are compatible with mode 3 of the VDC 80 column display. And here you see uh, the show ZX command in, in action, showing all the images in that directory full of images, but just the ones that start with D. You also have access to a SID player from the command line. So if we go use the browser again to go to the SIDS, SIDS subdirectory, we can use the SID play command. In this case, we'll select uh, Pepper Booze. And um, <clears throat> this actually does use a, a Lua script as a server to do some, some kind of magical relocation of the SID file so that it, it can run right within the command line. And you can pass uh, multiple SID files and, and advance from one to the next uh, just by pressing the uh, spacebar. So let's take a look at some uh, Commodore 64 native games this time. We use the go64 command from the shell and use that to exit into the 64 mode of our C128. And again, you see the, the boot screen and you see the C drive mapped to unit 10. And now if you use the load dollar sign command with unit 10, you see the contents of that, um, that directory that we were in games. And we can just do run galaga.prog to launch C64 games, uh, very similar to what we were doing before with the C128 uh, 80 column games. So here's uh, Galaga, the 64 game, launched uh, from the cartridge <coughs> using the go64 command to, to reboot the computer in the 64 mode. Um, if we want to um, do a slight variation of that, we can um, mount this Master of the Lamps, uh, actually a T64 or tape image. So we do go64 masslamp.t64. We'll mount this uh, tape image and take us into the 64 mode. And you'll see now that's the up arrow device that's mapped to unit 10. So that's where the tape disk files get mounted by default. And now if we just do the uh, run star, uh, you don't need to say unit 10 in C64 mode, just say run star. <coughs> that's a small extension to basic in, in uh, basic 2.0 actually. And you'll see the master of lamps binary loads almost instantly from the cartridge, but then takes uh, quite a quite a bit of time to actually decompress. And then you're greeted with a, a little crack draw screen, and you can advance into the um, instructions for the game and play the game. All pretty conveniently done, whether you're talking about a 128 or a 64 game. So let's go back and talk more about the Lua in integration. So I, I told you before, TTYL colon takes you to a Lua prompt. There's also a Lua command. So help Lua will tell you about that command. <clears throat> and if you just type Lua by itself, it takes you to the prompt. And indeed, you can do as expected. You can type in Lua commands like this simple one, which uh, just uh, does a little hello world kind of thing. Prints a hello 25 times. 
And so you can experiment with Lua. Uh, you can also type object names. For example, M8 is a built-in object in the Lua integration, and it will show you a pretty print of what the M8 object consists of. Um, if you type Lua help.lua, then what you will learn is that it takes you back into the help um, functionality because the help functionality indeed is, is uh, implemented as a Lua script. So help.lua is how help works, and it's a Lua script. Uh, some more Lua functionality can be uh, demonstrated if you go to the E directory. And for example, we have the sieve.lua, which is just a regular Lua script that prints prime numbers to the screen. Um, but in addition to that, we also have sieve.app. So this is the sieve.lua script, but now wrapped in a application binary. So it launches as a, as a native 128-6502 binary. And you can integrate things like pop-up menus to restart it from the beginning, printing prime numbers to your heart's content, or select exit to shell to go back. Some other sample applications that are not text-based but actually use graphics are cube.app. So this uses uh, VDC mode, uh, low resolution color mode, and, and Lua integration. And in this case, we're drawing this rotating cube, but all the computation for the cubes, vertexes, polygons is being done within a Lua script. And then that's fed back to the, um, the binary running on the Commodore 128, and it simply draws those polygons. Uh, so while it's not very fast or smooth, it is a double buffered VDC graphics display and much faster than if the 8-bit if the CPU had to calculate. Uh, Mandelbrot is similar. Um, the Lua script calculates the Mandelbrot set and feeds those uh, pixel images back to the Commodore 128 to plot them on the screen. And indeed, you can use the mouse to zoom in and out almost instantly when you click on an area, it zooms in, click the right, right mouse button to zoom back out. And it's uh, yeah much faster than if the 8-bit CPU was doing the calculation, but it still runs as a, as a native C128 application. So the last thing I want to demonstrate is the file browser. Um, the file browser if you is built in to the Edune cartridge. Um, if you go to edunepy colon 8080 in a browser, um, you'll be granted, you'll be greeted with this Edune file browser login screen. You log in using the default credentials. And from a browser, you can you can browse all your files. You can drag and drop new disk images in this case into your games directory or wherever you want them. Um, you can also rename, delete, edit files all within the browser. Uh, very convenient way to manipulate the, the files. Um, there's also a remote shell feature. So if you click the little toggle shell button at the top, um, you can even type commands remotely to your Commodore 128. So you type the DIR command and the output of that comes back to your web browser. And you can type commands like reboot and indeed the Commodore 128 will be remotely rebooted from your web browser. That's the end of the demo. Thanks for watching.